Welcome to my Red Panda Sculptor project using the needle felting technique by me, Stephanie Lester. <clears throat> so um, once again I wanted to come on and show my thought process around the Red Panda. Once I've decided I like to do a particular animal um, and sculpt it I then go in a bit more detail to find out for myself what it is that I like about this project sometimes the project could get rejected because when it comes down to it um, I may have been enticed in by something but actually when it comes down to it I wasn't I didn't feel quite so connected now the red panda has been um, in my mind for a while because we actually have red pandas not far from here in the Cotswold Wildlife Park in the UK and many years ago I went to see them and I was quite shocked um, at how small they were basically because in my head the giant panda is the only panda I've actually got in my head and as you very quickly find out when you start looking at red pandas giant pandas and red pandas are not connected they are quite different species and in fact they've now found out that in the red pandas themselves there are two different species but I shall talk about that more when we're looking at the um, presentation rather than me so yeah um, let's talk about which species of red panda because as I say, the giant panda and the red pandas are absolutely not connected. And in fact, the red panda is more closely related to the raccoon as opposed to the um, giant panda. And the red panda was discovered before the giant panda. And it's only, let's say, recent that um, they've discovered that actually it's two different species rather than subspecies of red panda that exist um, one which lives um, mainly in the Himalayan area the India Tibet Bhutan and Nepal and the other species is the Chinese red panda and um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the areas of China you can see them written there but um, you'll be able to see here on the left the cosmetic, let's say, differences between them. So on the top drawing, which I think is fantastic, it shows you the different faces. Um, so at the top, the top two, you've got the Chinese red panda and the bottom two, you've got the Himalayan. And as you can see, the Chinese red panda have got much darker um, colouring on their face. And in fact, the male one, which is the second one down, has that quite dark black, almost raccoon-esque um, about it around the eyes. And the um, bottom two, where you have the, the third one down is the female, the bottom one is the male. The female has a lot more white on her face and the male is still quite um, not as dark but if you look at the male at the bottom to so the male Himalayan and the top the female um, Chinese red panda you can still see there's a difference in that the Chinese panda is still much redder um, although, ironically, the male Himalayan has more red on the face than the um, female, because the female um, Chinese one has a lot of white, as in patches, as opposed to all over. Anyway, if you look at the photos below, the A and C are the... Um, Chinese and you can another way you can tell is the tail so when you look at C you might think oh, it's quite light isn't it but it's obviously the female Chinese and you can tell this because of the tail because the tail is much more distinct in its colouring um, of stripes 
when you look at D, um, which is looks like it's the male, yes, it's a male of the Himalayan, they've got the black bit on the end and the bit which is the lighter bit is definitely still much more coloured. The, the Chinese um, red panda has much lighter, whiter stripes with the red. So there's those two distinct areas. Now, obviously, when you see them in the wild, you'll know because you'll either be in China or you'll be in, you know, the Himalayas. So um, I think in those cases, it's quite easy to tell. But from my point of view, it's deciding um, which one of those species that I would really like to reproduce, I suppose is the word. So basically, I start going towards the Himalayan red panda because for some reason I've always been drawn to the Himalayas. Um, I don't know, I can't explain why I've always been drawn to the Himalayas, I just have. And um, so I started to immediately look at the male and the female and I think, I mean I could do one of each, but I love the idea of um, a bit more red on the face, so I think I'm drawn towards the male Himalayan red panda. Um, I, you know, they spend an awful lot of time sleeping, and if they're not sleeping they're eating, because just like their namesakes, the giant pandas, they eat an awful lot of bamboo shoots and have to eat an awful lot of them um, and the digestion I think takes quite a lot which is why they sleep a lot but they do also eat flowers um, and insects I believe but I love the idea that in the Himalayas they have fabulous rhododendrons and um, they will eat some of those and so the idea of a panda amongst rhododendrons did rather appeal to me. I mean, on this slide here, we've got a picture of the ginkgo leaf, which I am also amazingly attracted to. So, you know, could be a, gink, a bit of ginkgo, a bit of um, rhododendron going on. But yeah, I'm definitely drawn towards the Himalayan red panda. So then you start looking at their um, poses and behaviours. Now, uh, once again, there's a mix-up of... Um, Chinese and Himalayan pandas in these pictures but that big picture is fabulous um, panda standing up you might think he's lying down on his back but he's not he's standing up because when they're in danger of being attacked they will stand up and basically show that black belly because they're nice and black underneath and they'll put their claws up and you know basically make themselves look bigger and fiercer they're quite they're basically I mean they say they're the size of a big cat but um, I do have quite a big cat and um, I just measured him this morning because the pandas are between 20 and 25 inches well my big cat is 15 inches so they're substantially I'd say they're still a bit substantially bigger than a cat but um, nevertheless do not get them muddled up with the giant panda, who obviously is huge. Um, but yeah, and look at that little baby on the bottom. Look, I mean, it's obviously quite dark and not really very red at that point. And interestingly, they're quite solitary creatures until they mate um, and they have a season for mating and they come together for that. Um, and then Mama Bear looks after the baby. But uh, yeah, I've... As I say, I've got in my head this idea of the Himalayan red panda with perhaps ginkgo or rhododendrons. Um, I also love the idea that they clean in a very similar way to cats. So I just there's something about a cat cleaning which is quite impressive. So here we go. Um, pick a moment. <laughs> How difficult is that to pick a moment which will help you express it? So um, I've got a picture here of the Himalayan male 
on some flowers and I'm afraid I don't know my flowers well enough to know what they are. I should have asked I guess before I came on but I do like the idea of showing the panda in that kind of, look at those claws they're actually semi-retractable claws apparently um, and that tail look at that tail I mean you can still see the stripes even though obviously it's not quite as distinctive but yeah I think that will be the version I've gone and done an insert of the female versus the male but at this moment in time I think I'm going to do just one but we have no idea what will you know change my mind or not but uh whether i have i yeah see i don't think i'm gonna i know they spend a lot of time in trees sleeping and as sweet as that is um i think i'd like to show them they actually spend all of their waking time eating so i think i'm gonna perhaps have them eating but sitting in some flowers yeah that's what i've got that's what i've got in my head at the moment so that is obviously where we're heading towards um and then once again i take a closer look um studying the skeleton and this picture is brilliant got it off the internet um just to help me to understand those muscle groups um because when i get him into his pose that will help me get that right and you can see how that um, bottom part of the back arches up um, they don't have huge shoulder blades jutting out so um, but that will help me produce my skeleton and then produce that first layer of fiber over the top too which will then have the fur or no, the fur won't be attached it'll be fibers now i haven't even considered yet what type of fibers but because the red panda has obviously quite long fur i will be drawn towards alpaca at least at some part part because that will stop it from felting because even when you've done a sculpture in wool um with loose fur at some point it will felt because that's just the nature of the wall so the alpaca with its much um, smoother fibers won't do so even if i just mixed some alpaca in with the wool or whatever fibers i'm using i might end up going to plant-based fibers for it and um, you know the core i might end up See, now what I'm going to do for the core on this one is they have black underneath their, you know, their bellies anyway. But um, the way the colours come through, in fact, I haven't looked at it. I will check and see what their skin colour is underneath. But it looks quite dark underneath, so I think the whole of the core will be um, quite dark on the body. Obviously on the face, I'll do white core. There's a lot, quite a bit of that face is um, white and lighter. So yeah those are my kind of decisions on that so uh yeah even though with the long fur you're less likely to see the muscles i will get the muscles right because that will help me pose him properly so there you go that's where i've got to in my process and my next stage is to get the armature done and um, get creating basically so I will share back with you at the next stage of the process so see you soon